Welcome to the lesson 25 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson, we will consider uh, ultrasonic sensor. Right, ultrasonic sensors, ultrasonic measurements of flow velocity or ultrasonic based uh, flow velocity we have discussed some time back. Uh, but in these uh, particular lessons, we will uh, basically uh, use the, we will discuss the basic principle of the uh, sensors and the, how the transmitters, what is the principle of transmitters, it is its equivalent circuits, how the receiver works and the various applications of the ultrasonic sensors like level measurements, uh, crack detection as well as uh, the biomedical applications where the ultrasonic sensor plays a great role. So, do that part we will discuss in this particular lesson. Let us look at the contents of this lesson. Contents looks like ultrasonic principle, how the, what is the principle, how it works that is actually we will discuss here. Then transmitter receiver we will discuss in details. Then equivalent circuit of the ultrasonic sensors we will discuss. Then its applications, both the level measurements, crack detection as well as biomedical applications, we will all discuss uh, in this particular lesson. Ultrasonic sensors, if I look at the ultrasonic measurement system consists of an ultrasonic transmitter, the transmission medium and ultrasonic receiver. Whenever there is ultrasonic sensor, there must be a transmission medium and ultrasonic we will see that later on the ultrasonic is a very poor transmission uh, in air. So, medium there must be some medium might be water, might be some steel, might be some alloy uh, and so on and so forth. Especially the ultrasonic I mean signals we will see that it is a great transmission. So, I mean, transmission extremely good in the case of because ultimately we have to we need some receiver the way the signal will be received either the same signal can be used as a same transducer can be used as a receiver. So, in all the cases there should be good transmission that means transmission power should not be lost okay, substantially so that will not it is not possible to detect either by the separate uh, I mean receiver or by the same receiver which is uh, transmitting signal sometime back like that. The commonly used ultrasonic sensors are the piezoelectric sensing element okay, these are most commonly used. You see here in the figure we are showing the piezo crystals. We are applying here, let us look at, you see here, if I, you see here I am applying the signals, let me take uh, this one, applying a voltage okay, signal here, I am getting a force here, right. And it is reversible, you can see that if I apply the force, I will get a voltage. There is a typical principles of the ultrasonic sensors or the piezoelectric crystals I should say, right. It is a typical crystal, I mean we, we are using that properties of the piezoelectric crystals to generate the ultrasonic signals, right. As we know piezoelectric effect is reversible, the ultrasonic transmitter uses the inverse piezoelectric effect as I just right now I told that that is if a voltage is applied to the transmitter the crystal will undergo a corresponding deformation right. If I apply a voltage to a crystal, so there will be deformation of the crystal. So, how can I utilize let us look at you see I have I have a crystal here and take a different pen crystal here. So, I have applied the voltage right. If I applied the voltage obviously, what will happen I will get a vibrations on this side mechanical vibrations. So, these vibrations now if I applied uh, uh, AC obviously, if I applied a high frequency AC here I will get a vibration on this side. So, these vibrations will be transmitted on a medium. Now, if I receive if I put one on the receiver on the other side. So, this will also will vibrate with the same frequency because there is a movement of the particle movement of the medium. So, obviously, this will I mean this I should say the direct I mean indirect method indirect way that that means I am applying a uh, voltage I am getting a force and now the force is Im imposing on this crystals which is a receiver I am getting output voltage. This is basic principles of the ultrasonic transmitters and receiver. Though sometimes we will see that the same crystals are utilized for both transmission 
and for receiving the signals. Right? The vibration of the crystal is transmitted through the media from one end to the other. Just we have shown that the vibration, there is a vibrations and the signal ultrasonic signals will move through that medium. Basic ideas and all this I am not discussing because already we have discussed walls, we have I mean draw the um, discuss the basic um, flow meters using ultrasonic sensors. Here actually I am going more on the sensor side that means uh, how actually what is the equivalent circuits, what is what type of uh, signals it will generate, what are the basic application I mean that, th that type of things we will discuss in this particular lesson. The particle displacement sets up an accompanying pressure which is picked up by the receiver, right? Just I shown that is uh, it's a particle vibrations, okay, like it will vibrate like this one. So, this I have a receiver, this will also vibrate because wave will, the ultrasonic wave will transmit through the medium. So, it is received by the, that, uh, I mean that receiver and it will get the output signal. It might be, the, it might happen in the separate way also. Suppose I am giving as transmitting a signals which is a burst of signals, a short waves I am transmitting. So, it is getting reflected during transmission, it is working as a transmitter. So, when it is reflected, I am coming back here. So, I am this I can use as a receiver, right. The receiver use the direct piezoelectric effect because I mean if you, I mean if I use the term that if the uh, with electric well, with an electric voltage I am applying I am getting the force that is indirect. So, the receiver use a direct so the receiver will use a direct method right. So, one is indirect and this is direct so, there is nothing it is a reversible process that I want to mean. Direct piezoelectric effect and converts the force into the corresponding voltage. For transmitter I use some uh, notations x equal to d multiplied by v and for receiver Q equal to D multiplied by F. The performance characteristics D for both the cases are same, right. Moreover, F we can write K multiplied by X, K into X into D into V, where K is the steepness uh, constant of the crystal. This is the equivalent circuit of a transmitter, I think we have a signal generators, okay. So, on the other sides you see we have m, b, 1 by k, what are these legions that will be shown in the next slide, this equivalent circuit of it, I mean piezoelectric transmitter, right, which is actually we ultrasonic uh, transmitter I should say. So, it is on in contrast in context with the, I mean piezoelectric crystals I am discussing all this, where you see the z g, the output impedance of the signal. So, let me go back again. Okay, ZG, ZG is the here on the generator side, output impedance of the signal growth, mass of the crystals M, damping coefficient B, K the spring constant, ZM IN is the input impedance of the medium, X dot is the velocity. And ideally we can assume always that ZG equal to 0 and ZM IN that means output impedance of the signal growth is 0 and input impedance of the medium is also 0. So, ideal equivalent circuit of the transmitter looks like this, right. So, taking account the other what we have assumed. Now, this is the equivalent circuit, this is equivalent circuit of the transmitter with M, B and 1 by K reflected in the primary side. If I reflect in the primary side, obviously I will get L1, R1, C1, okay, where obviously when I reflect, I mean the primary side, what is the relation between the, I mean what we had previously in the secondary side and what it has now in the primary side that must be related by the, I mean, uh, I mean some coefficients which is dk, L1 equal to m upon dk square, R1 equal to b upon dk square and C1 equal to d square into k. Right. Now, overall impedance I should say 1 by H s or 1 by H s S c plus 1 upon R 1 S L 1 plus 1 by S c 1. Therefore, I can say that H j omega if I write in the j omega domain, so omega R 1 C 1 minus j all inside 1 minus omega square L 1 C 1 upon omega 
c plus c1 minus omega square l1 c c1 plus j omega square c c1 r1. Thus, we have two natural frequencies series natural frequency which is 1 upon root over l1 c1 and the parallel resonant frequency omega p root over c plus c1 upon l1 c c1 all under the square root obviously. Now, you see the magnitude plot of this transmitter is like this one right. It has significant I mean there is some significance of this plot which will be discussed later on. And the where at omega equal to omega n, omega n natural frequency the magnitude is minimum whereas, it is maximum at omega equal to omega p. Assuming r 1 equal to 0, you see this is a phase plot of the uh, transmitters. So, we can see within omega n omega p it is a 90 degree plus 90 degree phase shift and outside that range it has a minus pi by 2 phase shift. What does it mean? At omega equal to omega n, omega equal to omega p, the system is resistive, this is most important. And when R1 not equal to 0, the above diagram shifts towards the right hand side. So, this you see that it is working as resistive sensors, okay. At omega equal to omega p, the system is resistive, and when R1 equal to 0, the above diagram shifts towards the right hand side. The circuit behaves as an inductor between omega n and omega p clear in some part it is I mean resistive in some part it is inductive. Transmissions of ultrasound how do you transmit this ultrasound signal? If p is a pressure or stress and x dot equal to u is the velocity because x is a displacement so we are taking derivative of that. So, the characteristics impedance z equal to p by u a power intensity w equal to p into u average power intensity is given by w equal to 1 by lambda integral omega z dz lambda over the integration of the limit lambda to 0. It looks like this you see the transmissions of ultrasound signal between two medium ok. You see the medium 1 and this is medium 2. This is the crystals ok. This is a reflected wave we will see the legends what are the legends where z 1 is the characteristic impedance of the medium 1 what is z 1 ok this is z 1. z 2 is the characteristic impedance of medium 2 right and w i is the incident power intensity and w r the reflected power intensity and w t is the transmitted power intensity. W i is the laser uh, lesser than the power intensity generated by the crystal due to losses in the medium 1 right. Obviously, there will be some loss in the medium 1 and alpha r is the deflection coefficients which is given by W r by W i equal to z 2 minus z 1 whole square upon z 2 plus z 1 square. Alpha t is the transmission coefficient W t by W i 4 z 1 into z 2 z 2 upon z 2 plus z 1 whole square. And obviously, alpha r plus alpha t reflected and transmission I mean if you take this coefficient obviously, these two will be 1 if there is no absorption right. If z 2 e minus z 1 is large then the mode of the incident power is intensity is reflected back right. So, the characteristics impedance of the fume this you see this uh, very important while you will find we will see that while you using the, this ultrasonic sensor for the level measurements right. If z 2 minus z 1 is large then more of the incident power in, it will be reflected back from the mediums uh, 2 right. Using this principle we will make the level sensors right. So, this is a typical property even though sometimes it feels like that it is a bad quality but this property will be utilized to make a very good sensors of the level measurements as well as crack detections in a metal clear. Now, characteristics impedance of the few materials we will now jot down some of the characteristics impedance of the few materials quartz 1.5 into 10 to the power 7 then barium titanate 2.5 10 to the power 7 then polymer PVDF we are using all SI notations please note 0 0.4 in 10 to the power 7, steel 4.7 in 10 to the power 7, 
एल्युमिनियम 1.7 बोन 0.8 इंटू टेन टू दिवार सेवन वाटर 0.5 इंटू टेन दिवार सेवन एयर 430 ओनली राइट सो दिस द दिस प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द एयर विल बी यूटिलाइज्ड टू मेक द गुड लेवल मेजरमेंट ऑफ any liquid most of the liquids are will find i mean liquid is good but in the most of the cases air is a very poor i mean offering i mean transmit i mean characteristics impedance alpha r and alpha t for different in interfaces there are two interfaces of the two material medium 1 and medium 2 alpha r and alpha t for the different mediums will be this will give you how you can interface two actually two different medium while you are transmitting the signal from medium 1 to medium 2 right so that is the reason alpha r and alpha t is necessary so is the two different we will take the combinations of the two materials right see quartz steel so it is 0.27 0.73 quartz water 0.67 0.33 that means if you want to transmit right so this is reflected is more than the i mean transmittance and here you see the quartz the reflection is less than the transmittance and quartz here obviously will sign extremely poor so 1 and 1.1 10 to the minus 7 and 10 to the minus 4 thus we can say that the air is a poor choice for transmission of ultrasound waves right as the difference of the characteristics impedance of air with others is very large right pvdf is a polymer actually is used for biomedical applications so measurement of ultrasound pulse echo technique is a piezoelectric crystals acting as a transmitter receiver is attached to the medium one we'll show the diagram the characteristic characteristics impedance of medium one and two must be substantially different otherwise cannot be reflected first the crystal act as a transmitter and it sent out the pulse is a burst of signal i mean burst of pulse i mean it's very short duration pulse and it will remain silent for, for some time Until unless I received all the signals, all the reflected signals, right? You will find that you will get repeated reflected signals. We will take the first one, which is, I mean received signals which has the highest intensity. Other subsequent signals, reflected signals, we have lower intensity, right? Generated by the pulse generator with uh, with TW. You see this here. We are measuring scheme of ultrasounds. We are showing one time base here, It's same as the oscilloscope. Oscilloscope, as you know, we have a time base there also. So, to the from here also we have, I have two medium, medium one, medium two. We are just discuss this, I mean alpha R and alpha T for the two different mediums, the two medium. You see one reflected from this side, another one reflected for the medium. So obviously this will take more and time, and of lesser intensity. So here you will find the intensity is much more. And with the first signal, you see that a signal will come. So it will first go, sorry. So it will signal will go and reflected back. after i mean this signal again will come and reflected back obviously the first the shortest time will be this signal right because ultrasounds will transmit and will silent for some time right until unless we will make the all the measurements and next time again will transmit a signal most of the pulse energy what is this i mean be surprised what is eco amplifier eco amplifier is nothing it's a amplifier it is it is uh, i mean operated only for the time when the first reflected signal will come because the signal you may need the amplification that is the reason i need an amplifier here so that's the echo signal that means the reflected back signal will be amplified and put it here and so we have pulse generators which will give you in the time base it is in the vertical signals so the equivalent the signals what is the signal which is coming at the vertical plate that is a signal that is reflected ultrasonic waves are coming at the vertical path whereas the time base we are giving in the horizontal path this principle is same as we have seen in the oscilloscope right most of the pulse energy is reflected at the boundary of medium 1 and 2 clear what is that most of the pulse energy will be reflected here okay so a signal will come it will reflect it back and it will come down here right 
the crystal now acts as a receiver and receive a pulse, right. Initially it transmitted and remained silent, it will not transmit a signal until unless the signal is coming back from the receiver from the reflected surface. That means, the junctions of the two surfaces, two different medium will work as a reflector of the ultrasonic waves. The time taken by the reflected pulse is dt equal to 2 i upon c, right. What is y 2? Because it will go and it will reflect it back. What is 2 l? If you say it is l small letter or 2 i whatever it. So, it is the length of the medium one, right. Where i is the distance of the interface of the two medium from the crystals, right. What is that? Let us look at. <coughs> I have deflected like this one. So, I have a 2 medium is here, right. So, I am transmitting a signal. So, its signal is coming reflected back. This is our L i, right. And C is the velocity of sound in medium 1, clear. Now, you see the reflected uh, means of ultrasonic signals this is a very nicely we have shown. You see the first outgoing pulse will look like this one obviously, because a part of the signal will be transmitted uh, through the medium to the junction of the medium will go to the medium 2. So, the, this is the first reflected wave it will come, then second reflected wave, then third reflect all of different magnitude. So, we will first the we will take this one and we will not send any signals until unless all the signals are died out all the reflected signals are die out. We can calculate that part and accordingly my burst of signals which will go to the transmitter because there must be some electronic circuitry which will transmit the signal which will go to the because ultimately I have to impose some vibrations. I can use some oscillators also there right electronic oscillators which will start to make the vibrations of the ultrasonic uh, crystals right. So, I can uh, obviously, I can program in such a way that the time taken a time in between transmission of two signals will be such that the all the reflected waves will be die out by during within that time. The repetition rate T r should be such that all the reflected pulses of the interest have been observed before sending the second pulse, right. The transmit time T t should be large compared to the pulse width T w to avoid interference between the outgoing pulse and the incoming or reflected wave, right. So, we have a width. So, we have decided I mean we are making transmitting time T d should be large compared to the pulse width to avoid the interference. So, we are making this large width. So, obviously, using that times we will transmit, right. What does it mean? It means you see I have a it looks like this that means I have a width like this one, right because this I can program. So, during that time this time all my signal reflected waves okay, will be finished until unless. So, there is sufficient amount of elapsed time my next pulse will be transmitted again. So, this is the transmission width right. So, it is the pulse width T w to avoid interference between the outgoing pulse and the incoming or reflected pulse. This is all about right. Now, applications of this type of I mean ultrasonic signals let us look at. The method discussed can be used to the to make the label measurements, okay. especially the label measurements of a liquid I mean if I need a uh, with precision and fast measurements because you know the liquid there are various types of measurement of uh, label measurements. We have a uh, steel tape and the uh, uh, and the ruler that type of things are there scale and I mean steel tape which is used mostly in the our country you will find many where in the uh, municipality I mean tank. So, huge tank so the, that can be utilized for measurements that means it is other way you see the scale will be when it is empty uh, when the tank is empty the all the indicators will go up okay. and when the tank is full the indicator will come down it is a mechanical indicator which is uh, which is connected by a counterweight. So, that uh, I mean it will whenever this uh, level is up level is filled up. So, it will switch off. Now, there are many other there are capacitive method of level measurements we have seen there are I mean method of so many other methods of um, uh, level measurements 
we have a pneumatic level measurements that means that may, I mean it looks like this you see I have a I mean a vessels okay so I will put a a pressure on this one so there is a float so this will so if it goes up so it will put a pressure on the bellows right so this can be transmitted okay to indicate on a burdo gauge or a i mean to show the pressure because so this pressure gauge will be calibrated in terms of in terms of i mean in terms of level you cannot use both the cases that means you cannot use both the i mean burdo gauges and the i mean and the C type board the tube, you have to use either. Either you use bellows because bellow will try to expand so that uh, if you connect an indicator, it will show you the level, or if you connect it to the some Burdo gauge, so there is a deflection of the seat free end of the I mean C tube, so you will get the measurements and that pressure can be calibrated in terms of level. So, there is a lot of, but you see the most of the cases, this is most important that the ultrasonic method measurement you will find is very non invasive type of technique. Right, you do not have to, your sensor should not be in contact with the, not necessarily should be in contact with the, with the liquids or any other I mean, materials. You see this is a typical example, I mean uh, of a level measurements, it looks like this. You see this is a liquid, this is our vessel in which I am interested to make the measurement. Right. So, there is ultrasonic signal, so I am transmitting these signals and reflected back. As I told you the pulse width will be sufficiently large, so that I mean uh, I mean all the reflected waves will be collected here okay, before I send the next pulse. Right. So, this time will be measured. Okay. So, time will be what? So, the, as the level goes high. Okay. So, as the level goes high, it will, ultrasonic waves will take more and more time to travel the distance right? and will be reflected. So, I will calculate the T as I told you, T equal to 2 I by C. So, if this is I, right? so I see C is the velocity of ultrasonic waves in this particular liquid. right? So, I will get direct measurements because how? If I measure T, so obviously I will be what? I will be level. So, I will be T multiplied by C divided by 2, is not it? But there is a precision of measurement because you see this, I mean, signal is go so fast, the entire accuracy will lie on how accurately you can measure the T, that is most important. Right, even though it looks very simple, I mean, when you show like this one, but actual implementation is quite tough in that sense. Clear? Now, you see why I have installed the crystal at this side. I could have installed the on this side also. I could have installed the crystal on this side. Is not it? I the ultrasonic wave also will come here and it reflected back. But this is the liquid. This is my liquid. Right. So, let me take the new page, so that will be better. You see this is my liquid and this is air, this is the top surface of the vessel, top surface and this is the top surface of the liquid. If I install a ultrasonic sensor here, then what will happen? Either way it is same, because as the liquid goes up and up, what will happen that uh, again that uh, this uh, it will reflect it back from this side. Because you see due to the difference of the characteristics impedance, uh, the uh, uh, ultrasonic will be reflected. Here also the uh, sound will be reflected. But as I told you that it is very difficult to launch these ultrasonic waves in air. So, that is the reason we have put the crystal down, so that it can be easy to transmit the signal through the liquid rather than transmitting through the 
here. Clear? It is to be noted that the crystal must be placed at the bottom, not at the top. Just we have what we have discussed right now, right? If placed at the top due to presence of air, no wave will be able to propagate, thus giving us erroneous measurements, right? That is the reason we have installed at the bottom of our vessel. Now, ultrasonic waves, as I told you earlier at the beginning of the lesson, it is also used for the crack detection. You see here what will happen, ultrasonic waves will come. If it, there is no crack, so what will happen? The signal will transmitted like this one, if there is no crack. If there is a crack, then what will happen? So again there is a difference of the characteristic impedance here. So what will happen? So it will, it will come, it will reflect it back through this one. If I know that, sorry. If I know the time, sorry, if I take a, so what will happen? It will go, it cannot move through here, so it will reflect it back. So if I measure the time, I can exactly locate the where the crack is, even though if it is from outside, it might be invisible, if it is the crack is inside, right. This is a very excellent technique, I mean we have different techniques of a crack detection, so we have the detections of the, we have method of x-ray and all this thing. But it is a very cumbersome, you know you have to, I mean you take an x-ray, it is a hazardous, you have to shield the people who are working there, then I mean you need a plate where to develop all those things. But that is not necessary here in the case of ultrasonic signals, if you use mainly for crack detections. Here crack or gap acts as a second medium and thus help us to detect where the crack has taken place. Ultrasonic can also be used in the measurement of flow. We have you already we have seen that the, we have transit time ultrasonic flow meter, Doppler shift ultrasonic flow meter, those we have already discussed. Though I, we have not discussed in details of the transmitter and receiver uh, that we actually we are discussing in the ultrasonic sensor itself. That is actually is a part of flow measurements that there is a little scope of discussing on the, all this. Uh, sensor as such, as a it is as a whole as a transducers flow, transducers we have discussed the ultrasonic measurement of flow. Advantages, what are the different advantages? It is easy to direct and focus a beam of ultrasound as diffraction of these waves are small, okay, due to short, due to their short wavelength, diffraction is small, okay. Ultrasonic waves can easily pass through the metals, that is a great advantage. This help in mounting the measurement system outside the system and it will not lead to the development, it will lead to the development of the non-invasive techniques of measurement or non-invasive sensors. This is a terminology we are calling in non-invasive measurement, okay. So this is a non-invasive measurement techniques we are utilizing for ultrasonic waves, I mean making the ultrasonic measurement. Because see, I can install it outside, I do not have to install anything inside. You have seen in all the pressure, all the level measurements except capacitors obviously. But capacitors is not a problem, I mean shield, shielding, parasitic capacitor, all this comes, uh, I mean great problem in the measurements. So, you need very accurate LCR meters or accurate bridge and all this, this is not necessary in the case of ultrasonic measurement. Special application, ultrasonic applications, there are special applications of the ultrasonic waves. Ultrasonic sensors have wide applications in biomedical instrumentation, right. Measurements of blood flow, there are I will discuss three different uh, major applications of ultrasonic waves in biomedical instrumentation. Measurements of blood flow in the artery, determination of the blood pressure and ultrasonography. If though ultrasonography I have not discussed the typical ultrasonography, I mean uh, abdomens, ultrasonography all those things, we will discuss some part of the ultrasonography. Because it is a huge subject, so you can take reference to any books. I mean textbooks. Determination of blood pressures, how the blood pressures will be. You see these are typical, I mean typical diagrams of ultrasonic determination of blood pressures, right. So here you will find that uh, uh, I have ultrasound sensor, okay, okay. And we have a ultrasound, this is a blood flow. 
and we have a ultrasound 8 megahertz detector also. This 8 megahertz signals and we have a 8 megahertz detector also, amplifier and detectors. This audio amplifier, audio outputs, it is going to a headphone. This is actually, please note, this is a headphone, right? This is a headphone. We can, I mean, by listening to the sound, I can tell what is the pressures, okay? This is how blood, and the blood is flowing to this artery. You see what will happen that 8 mega incident ultrasound will come and it is in the blood, so they will be reflected. Now, what will happen? Uh, you see here, I have a skin here because we have to put outside the skin, so it is a non investing technique very much. So, we will look at the sound, we will listen to the sound. During the opening and the closing of the valves, I will get a signal of the during opening, I will get a larger. I mean amplitude signals and during closing I will get a short I mean amplitude signal. So, by this I can detect the ultrasounds and measure the pressures. Okay? So, this frequency is this delta f is now converted into the audio output. So, delta f will be different. right? The measurement scheme employs a transcutaneous Doppler sensor which detects the motion of the blood vessels walls at various states of occlusion, right. Two small ultrasonic crystals 8 megahertz used as a transmitter as well as receiver. The transmitted signal from the Doppler ultrasonic is focused on the vessel wall and the blood. And the reflected signal is detected and decoded, right. Decoding means that means I am decoding and converting into the amplitudes and all this frequency dependent, I mean uh, frequency voltage convert or that type of signal. Difference between the transmitter and the receive signal is in the frequency range of 40 to 500 hertz and is proportional to the velocity of the wall motion and the blood velocity. Right? When cup pressure is above the diastolic, but below systolic, the vessel opens and closes each heartbeat as the pressure in the artery also oscillates below and above the external cup pressure. This opening and the closing are determined by the ultrasonic systems that I show and yeah, that means the two different waves and during openings I will get a signal like this one. Sorry. So, I will get a signal which looks like During opening and during closing, I will get again during opening so opening and close, right. So, this type of signal I will get. As pressure is increased further, the time between the opening and closing decreases and the reading indicates the systolic pressure, right. Conversely, when we decrease the pressure in the cuff, the diastolic pressure is recorded, clear. Now, advantage, what is the advantage of this system? There are some disadvantages also. Let us first look at the advantage. It can be used with the infants and hypotensive individuals that with pressures, I mean persons with a high blood pressures as you know the medical for a healthy person the blood pressure should be within 80 to 120, right. So, uh, but uh, some people have a very high uh, blood pressure so for that type of uh, patients we can use also it can be used for infants. Can be used in the high noise environment because you see all this uh, I mean uh, this other type of uh, measurement techniques what they are used actually it depends that the uh, physician must uh, must locate the time when the valves are opening. They must locate the barometric pressures uh, sorry the manometric pressures when the valves are opening right. So, it is sometimes very difficult if it is a noisy environment. So, th so it is quite immune to noise, outside noise, environmental noise, okay, which is very common in hospitals and all these things. So, it can be nicely utilized in that type of uh, environment or that type of in that type of um, places. But what is the disadvantages? Disadvantages, the movements of the subject's body cause the changes in the ultrasonic paths between the sensor and the blood vessels. Obviously, everything will change. So, the patient should I mean uh, some steady conditions you should not lie. So, it is very difficult obviously though we are saying that it is very contradictory we are saying the infant we can use. 
but in some cases we can utilize this type of uh, that measurement. Now blood flow meters, you know these flow meters is basic principle is same transit time flow meters and the flow meters like uh, Doppler shift flow meters, but the same principles also used for me measurements of blood flow or the measurements of blood in the artery. Blood flow measurements using the ultrasonics can be done by the following transit time uh, measurement flow meter, Doppler ultrasonic flow meters, Doppler shift. This we have discussed very details in our I mean flow meter I mean lessons. So, I will not go to much details of this way. In context with the alt, I mean biomedical instrumentation, I will discuss something, not think more than that. You see these are ultrasonic transducers configurations we are using different configurations of the ultrasonic users I mean uh, transducers A, B, C, D or this let us look at. Case A the transit time probe requires two transducers facing each other and the path length between them is L and an inclined to the vessel axis at an ang angle theta. We know if you recall go back to the ultrasonic I mean as soon as you see the transit time principle is something like this ok. I have a vessel like this one ok. So, I have a signals always will be inclined ok. I have a sensor here. So, it is a this make an angle of theta right that is actually I am telling that means what I am telling here for case A the transit time probe requires two transducers facing each other obviously you see that you remember in the I have two sensors liquid is flowing through this I have one sensor here and another sensor here right it's facing each other clear and uh, the transit time probe requires two transducers facing each other and the path length between them is L and are inclined to the vessel axis at an angle theta. The shaded region is representing the an acoustic pulse right. What is that? Let us go back. Shaded region is acoustic pulse. For trans, uh, transcutaneous probe as in B both the transducers are placed on the same side they can be placed on the skin and the beam intersection region is shaded. Let us go back ok this is a beam intersection region so two ones are placed ok. So, for transcutaneous probe as in the B both the transducers are placed on the same side and they can be placed on the skin so that we are utilizing the reflection from the blood I mean from the end of the artery like that trans intersection region is the is shaded right. For case C we can use a lens which helps to focus and narrow the beam sometimes we need to narrow the beam since we, it can be utilized to do that. Case D is used for pulse operations in this case the transducer is loaded by the backing it with a mixture of tungsten powder in epoxy and a shaded region is shown for a single time of range grating. Okay. There is a Doppler ultrasonic flow meters we see here we have an oscillators I mean I, I always encourage that uh, those who are I mean listening to this particular lesson they should go back to my uh, the lesson on the uh, flow measurements using ultrasonic principles. Okay. So, all the things will be discussed in great detail there right. So, that is the Doppler ultrasonic blood flow measurements the principle is same. Okay, there are two types of frequency will good. We will get a zero crossing detectors, we have an low pass filters and output detectors because the added frequency will be related on the I mean difference of frequencies will be delayed, which is very small. So, that will be passed, other all other frequencies will be stopped. So, this is actually the entire scheme of our ultrasonic flow meters using ultrasonic measurements of blood flow using the Doppler shift method. Right. You can see here, so we have a detector, so then after that frequency will be lower. So, we have audio frequency amplifier detector can be simply a diode detector. So, obviously, what will happen that the output signals what will get low frequency and obviously, I can use an audio frequency amplifier there. You see this is a audio frequency amplifier. Uh, we can have audio frequency output or speaker output also. Okay. 
and we have a zero crossing detector then low plus filter then we can get the output recorder because this will I will get a signal this I am getting audio signals this I am getting electrical signal again here which can be recorded right. For Doppler flow meter we know that F D by F O equal to U by C where F D is the Doppler frequency shift and F O is the source frequency which is basically ultrasonic frequency, U is the target velocity and is the velocity of sound ok sorry so is source frequency not velocity is F naught is the source frequency or the frequency of the ultrasonic sensors. For blood flow meters the blood cells act as the particulate matters which form the reflecting targets right because as you know in the case of Doppler shift flow meters I mean in the case of uh, transit time flow meters is basically used uh, in the case of clean liquid whereas the Doppler shift flow meter will not work with that we have discussed in details that it will not work until unless there is some suspended particle there in the liquid itself. If the liquid is flowing through the pipe there should be some suspended particle whatever small it may be but that particle will be missing here in the case of and the blood flow measurement but the, the blood cells will act as a particulate matters which form the reflecting targets right from that actually the ultrasonic field will be reflected back it is excellent okay is not it okay they will say sometimes with that time we have discussed that the two different flow meters because in we do not know what type of liquids flow we are measuring sometimes the liquids are might be very clean suppose in the case of water okay or some other liquid but in sometimes it may have sludges it might have some suspended particles but if the liquid is extremely clean I cannot use the Doppler shift flow meters. But that I mean principles is purposefully we are utilizing here in the case of blood flow measurement right where the cells will act as a reflector of the signals ultrasonic signal which is transmitted from the transmitter. In the arrangement shown in the figure frequency shift occurs twice once between the transmitting source and the moving cell correct second another between the moving cell and the receiver right one is the moving between the transmitter source and the moving cell moving cell means moving blood cell right it is moving cell means moving blood cell because obviously when the, there is a there is continuous flow of blood through our artery right. So, there is the cells are also which is continuously moving through the artery. So, another between the moving cells and the receiver. So, of F d by F naught equal to 2 u by c as c is much much greater than u ok velocity of the ultrasound must be much much higher than the velocity of the blood flowing in the artery. So, what I can say that taking angle factor theta the angle between the beam of sound and the axis of blood vessel F d equal to twice F naught u cos theta by c condition number 1 and as in the figure the ultrasonic waves are transmitted to the cell which reflects the Doppler shifted wave to the receiver right as in the figure the ultrasonic waves are transmitted to the cell which reflects the Doppler shifted wave to the receiver right. So, that means I have ultrasonic waves it is getting reflected and coming to the receiver how does it look looks like this one ultrasonic waves are there ok. So, I have a source here sorry. So, I have a source and I have a receiver here ultrasonic waves I am transmitting ok. So, it is getting here deflected back from the blood vessel this is our blood vessels blood cells rather I should say blood cell right reflects the Doppler shifted wave to the receiver. So, this is getting deflected I am getting here it is getting reflected. The amplified radio frequency signal plus the carrier signal is detected by the produce and audio frequency signal is the basic principles of a audio I mean our heterodyne receivers ok this classical method is actually utilized here also AF signals given by equation 1. Now, ultrasonography you see this and this is a I should say the last I mean uh, example of a I mean this is a very I mean very uh, wide subjects I mean it is in depth study is very difficult to 
accommodate in this particular fag end of the I should say of the of this particular lesson, but it is extensively used for measurements of many to know, especially when the child is in the home of a woman. So, that uh, that time also it is utilized to know the health of that type of uh, that baby in womb, right. Anyway, there are other applications of the ultrasonography, we will discuss that part, ok. So, you see the brain medicine, a mode scan of the brain midline. I have a receiver transmitters, ok. So, transmitting signals it is transmitted and I have oscilloscopes, I have a sweep as usual, ok. I am giving the vertical plates, this I am giving in the ok, sweep I am giving to the uh, horizontal plate, I have to know, I have to make it stationary, ok, because the signal is to be stationary, the, you know that is the basic principles of the sawtooth wave form when we give to the a horizontal waves or horizontal plates, right. So, that is actually utilized here, a mode scan of the brain midline. The appropriate electronic circuit can be used to pulse the ceramic in order to transmit a short pulse of ultrasonic energy, ok. Always please remember in all this method, we are always are transmitting a short burst of the energy, ok. How does it look? You have seen that is already we have shown that is we are transmitting signal looks like this then it is getting reflected with slower and lower and magnitude. Again I will transmit, this is the one width, again I will transmit. So, this is a short burst of signals, is not it? It is not a continuous signals, you cannot make a, if you transmit a continuous signal nowhere you can make the measurement, clear. If first act as a miniature loudspeaker, and then switch to act as a microphone to receive signals reflected from the interface of various tissue types, right. I can use a speakers also, ok, and transmission and for receiver I you can use a microphone. Ultrasonic energy at the level, levels of medical imaging causes no harms to tissue, that is very important because any other methods will give you harm the tissues. So, ultrasonic energy will not harm the tissues. Because whenever you are using in medical instrumentation, you have to look at the safety, that it should not harm the human being, it should not damage anything. So, those part you have to, this is an AMO device which shows equal intensity as an XY plot. So, we have shown why we are giving the amplitude of the reflected waves and X plates we are giving the uh, sweep. So, I will get a stationary waves, ok. This is a, some information, I mean B mode ultrasounds imaging, intensity informations, ok. Looks like this, this is known as B mode ultrasonic imaging techniques which shows two dimensional shape and reflectivity of the objects by using multiple scan paths. This type of simple device is seldom used now and has been replaced and more uh, elegant systems. So, with this uh, I come to the end of lesson 25 which is on the ultrasonic sensors. Welcome to the lesson 26 of industrial instrumentations. In this lesson basically we will cover a electronic uh, instrumentation. Let us look at nucleonic instrumentation means that uh, we will use some uh, radioactive sources and there will be corresponding detectors and there are some advantages of this um, uh, of this this type of instrumentation because we have seen that the in the in the lesson 25 we have covered a ultrasonic instrumentation so there are some typical advantage of the ultrasonic but there are some cases like if you want to launch that ultrasonic waves in the air, it is just impossible where the radioactive rays can I mean move through the air. So, that is a great advantage of this particular uh, instrumentation. So, it is to be covered very extensively. Let us look at the contents of this particular lesson. Contents, principles of nucleonic instrumentation, radioactive sources, radioactive source elements, what are the different elements which will pour or which will make the radioactive sources, 
basic radioactive, radioactive sources means alpha, beta, gamma rays, but what are the elements which will actually used for uh, um, used we actually used in the neutronic instrumentation that we must study. Its application in, in industrial instrumentations that means you will find the label gauge, uh, the, there is typical applications of the measurements of label, then uh, typical applications uh, of the measurements of the coating of sheets and the rolling mills. So, there are various applications we will find in this particular type of instrumentations. So, atomic weight might be same or uh, the density is uh, density might be different but the atomic weight can be the same. For level measurement you use the following scheme, this is a scheme of the level measurement. So, we have a source you see here, we have a detector here ok and so this is the level measurement using nuclear instrumentation. So, I have a liquid here, so how it works let us look at. When the passing when passing through the fluid the absorption will be more and hence the amplifier output forces the stepper motor to move the source and detector to move upward right. You see what will happen. So, when passing through the liquid this will so it will always try to move this stepper motor to move it upward right. When they reach the interface the absorption falls and thus we know that the level is reached clear. Let me go it again. So, the basic principle is something like this, it, these two system this I mean let me take uh, that means this stepper at uh, this source and detector will be initially at the bottom here. Okay. And please note that uh, in the nucleonic instrumentation, so the hazard is a great problem. So, you have to think of all this whenever you are using what type of I mean radioactive materials you are using. Though the half life and all this thing is not uh, that large, but uh, the um, amount of rays you have to think of. So, the proper hazards and it is sometimes there is a environmentalist are there. So, until unless you, you can manage with some other instrumentation which is non hazard hazardous like the uh, ultrasonics and any conventional instrumentation of level gauge or density measurement that is to be used. But in some situations as I told you like the detections of the leak in the pipe underground or suppose the in a closed containers I want to know the level of the liquids and all these things. It is very difficult to you know especially it is sealed. The container might be closed it does not matter because if I have a inside uh, I mean electronics already installed, installed inside. So, I can uh, sensor installed inside I can detect, but if it is a separate container suppose a, 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 a cylindrical drum I want to know the how much the liquid contains which you cannot see from outside. So, that type of situations I can use this type of radiation technique or radio I mean technique ok. So, this is to be basically and all of you have to be careful that means I that I told you several times that means if I can manage with other instrumentation systems conventional non hazardous systems we are not supposed to use radioactive sources right. So, with this I come to the end of this lesson 26.